The movie begins with Judy, a young bunny, performing a drama about the savagery of predators. She addresses the crowd on how predators have a biological urge to kill other animals. Judy talks about how all the animals have evolved and no longer hunt each other for survival. The young animals talk about their future ambitions, and Judy mentions she wants to become a police officer and go to the city of Zootopia. Judy's parents tell her how it's impossible for her to become a police officer and ask her to give up her dreams and join them on their carrot farm. Judy sees a fox named Gideon following some animals and she follows them. She sees as he forces the animals to give him their tickets and Judy confronts him. He tells her to stop deceiving herself and he pushes her to the ground. Judy kicks Gideon's face and he gets angry and scratches her with his claws. He holds her face to the floor and eventually leaves. The other animals emerge from hiding and she returns their tickets. Years pass and Judy joins the police academy. She isn't able to go through most of the obstacles and her coach tells her she'll die if she remains weak. Judy doesn't give up and begins to go through all the obstacles. Later, Judy graduates from the academy as the best officer and Mayor Lionheart, the mayor of Zootopia, congratulates her. He deploys her to Zootopia and she is excited but her parents are scared. Judy packs her belongings and her parents bid her farewell. They warn her about foxes and other predators and give her fox repellent spray. She gets on the train and begins her journey to Zootopia. Judy arrives in the city and is fascinated by the view. She arrives at her new apartment and gets even more excited. Her neighbors are noisy, but she doesn't mind the noise. The following day, Judy wakes up and prepares for work. She takes the fox spray along and leaves her house. She gets to the police station and meets Clawhauser, a fat cheetah, who is the cop on desk duty. He gives her directions to the roll call room, and she enters the room and sees that all the other cops are large animals. Chief Bogo walks into the room and informs the officer that they have 14 missing mammals, all of whom are predators. He shares the assignment with various cops, and he gives Judy parking duty. Judy tries to convince him that she can do better, and he tells her to write 100 tickets a day. Judy gets to work and decides to write 200 tickets before noon. She accomplishes her task, but is forced to write herself a ticket. She sees a fox named Nick walking into an ice cream store. She walks into the store to see what's going on and sees Nick with a little animal he claims is his son. The elephant in charge of the store refuses to sell ice cream to him and Judy confronts him. She threatens to report the elephant for going against several health policies and he agrees to sell the ice cream. Nick lies that he doesn't have any money and Judy pays for it. They walk out of the store and Nick thanks her for all her help. Later, Judy sees Nick and realizes he's a cone artist. She watches as he melts the ice cream, then convert into popsicles and sells it to other animals. She then sees as they sell the popsicle sticks to some construction workers and lies that it's Redwood. Judy approaches him as his cone partner drives away and she tries arresting him. He shows her some documents and she realizes she cannot arrest him. As they walk, he informs her that coming to Zootopia doesn't mean that she'll achieve all her dreams and assures her that she'll return to her hometown to become a carrot farmer. He tricks her into standing in wet cement and she gets stuck. That night, Judy gets home and plays depressing music. She gets a video call from her parents and they realize she's a meter maid and not a real cop. They get relieved and Judy hangs up the call. Following day, Judy sits sadly in her car. Suddenly, a weasel named Weaselton steals some plants from a store. The store owner asks her to catch him and she abandons her duty and goes after the weasel. She pursues him to a city of rats and is forced to save a rat from a falling donut. Judy uses the donut to take the weasel back to the police station and Bogo calls her to his office. Bogo scolds Judy for her reckless act and tells her that she's not in a fantasy where she'll suddenly become great. As he talks to her, Mrs. Otterton suddenly walks in and begs for help. She asks about her missing husband Emmett and says he's been missing for 10 days. Bogo informs her that the officers are busy, and Judy tells Mrs. Otterton that she'll find her husband. Otterton thanks Judy, and after Otterton leaves the office, Bogo fires her. He asks Judy to tell Otterton she won't be searching for her husband, but Bellwether, the assistant mayor, hears the news and informs the mayor. Bogo then gives Judy 48 hours to find Emmett, or she'll have to resign. Judy looks through the case file and sees a picture of Emmett licking a popsicle. She realizes that Nick sells popsicles and goes to interrogate him. Nick tries to avoid Judy and tells her he makes a lot of money from his cone business. Judy secretly records his statement and blackmails him into working with her. He agrees and takes him to a club where Emmett usually goes. They arrive at the club and meet Yaks. He lets them into the club and Judy realizes it's a nudist club. He takes her to an elephant and asks about Emmett. 
but she says she doesn't remember. As Yax asks her, Judy realizes that he's giving her some vital information, and she writes it down. He also mentions the license plate of the car Emmett got in, and Nick takes her to a place where she can find out who owns the car. They arrive at the DMV, and Judy realizes that all the receptionists are sloths. They meet Flash Nick's friend, who helps them find the license plate owner, but wastes a lot of time. They leave the DMV and realizes it's already night. That night, they go to where the limo is parked and see it's locked. Judy convinces Nick to help by throwing the recorder a pen shaped like a carrot over the fence. Judy and Nick enter the compound and enter the vehicle. They go through it and see that the back is covered in claw marks. Nick realizes the limo owner, and as they try to leave, they get apprehended by some polar bears. The polar bears take them to Mr. Big, and Nick informs Judy that Mr. Big hates him because he sold a rug made from a skunk's butt. They arrive at the building and are taken to Mr. Big, an arctic shrew. He decides to kill them, but is stopped by his daughter who is getting married. She realizes that Judy saved her from the giant donut, and Mr. Big invites them to her wedding. Mr. Big informs them that Emmett is his florist, and he suddenly attacks the limo driver on his way to see him. He tells them they can ask the limo driver for more details, and they decide to go to his house. Manches is the limo driver, and he tells Judy and Nick about how Emmett attacked him suddenly. They ask him to let him into the house, and as he opens the door, he begins acting strange and attacks them. Judy tries to call for backup, but Clawhauser is distracted and doesn't answer. He eventually answers her and calls for backup. Judy and Nick evade Manches, and as he tries to attack Nick, Judy saves him and they get entangled in some vines. The police arrive and Judy takes them to where Manches is, but he isn't there. Bogo asks for her badge, but Nick reminds him that she still has 10 hours to find Emmett. They leave the area and Nick tells Judy how he was discriminated against as a child for being a fox. They then realize that cameras are all over the city, and they go to the city hall to view the footage. Nick and Judy arrive at the city hall, and Bellwether gives them access to the camera footage. They watch as some wolves apprehend Matches and take him to a strange building. They arrive at the building and Judy distracts the wolves by howling, leading all the wolves to Hull. They enter the building and as they look around, they see all the missing animals in cages. They realize that all the animals are extremely violent and they hide in a cage when someone approaches them. Lionheart enters the lab with a scientist and Judy makes a video of him. Her phone rings and Lionheart runs out as the guards sweep the building. Judy and Nick escape by flushing themselves down the toilet. They emerge in a river and Judy informs the police that she's found all the missing animals. The police apprehend Lionheart and hold a press conference the next day. Nick calms down Judy and gives her advice on answering questions from the paparazzi. She then asks him to become his partner and gives him a form to fill out. Judy addresses the press and a reporter asks her why only predators behave savagely. She is forced to inform them that it may be due to their biology, which upsets Nick. She walks up to Nick, and he informs her that she's no different from the other animals who segregated him for being a fox. He walks out of the building, and she tries to follow him, but is blocked by paparazzi. Some days later, Bogo informs Judy that Bellwether is the new mayor, has summoned her to her office. She goes to Bellwether's office, and Bellwether tries to make her the face of the police department. Judy blames herself for the segregation between the predators and other animals, and she decides to quit. Judy returns to her parents and becomes a carrot farmer. She meets Gideon, who apologizes to her for being mean to her when they were kids. As her siblings play, her dad tells them to avoid the nightcrawler plant and says it makes them crazy when they eat it. Judy realizes that the nightcrawlers are what makes the predators go savage, and she rushes back to Zootopia. Judy meets Nick under a bridge and tells him what she found out. She begs him for his forgiveness and cries as she talks, and Nick records what she says and forgives her. They find the weasel and ask him who sold the nightcrawlers. He refuses to help, but Mr. Big helps them, force the information out of him. They go to where he drops the nightcrawlers and finds a lab in a train cart. A sheep creates some bullets with the nightcrawlers and gets a knock on the door. Judy pushes the sheep out of the cart and decides to take the cart to the police. The sheep pursue them and get back in the cart, Judy maneuvers the cart and gets the sheeps off, but the cart derails and explodes. Nick saves some evidence from the cart, and they enter a museum. Bellwether approaches them, and Judy realizes she's the mastermind behind the attacks. She orders her goons to catch them as they run, and Judy gets injured. Bellwether catches up to them as they run, and they fall into an exhibit. She tells them her plan to eliminate all the predators and shoots Nick with the nightcrawler bullet. Nick attacks Judy, and as he bites her, 
he reveals that he isn't infected, and he exchanges the bullets with blueberries. Judy then informs her that she recorded their conversation, and as Bellwether tries to escape, Bogo and his men arrive and arrest her. Judy gives a speech on how they all must accept each other to live in peace. She welcomes Nick as the first fox to be a police officer, and they celebrate. In the police station, Bogo gives the officers their assignments and informs Judy and Nick of a street racer terrorizing the roads. Judy and Nick get in their car and pursue the racer. They get to him and realize he's flashed the sloth. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can get more video like this.